Good morning, Northbrook United Methodist Church and Christ United Methodist Church. I'm Laurie Moeller, and I'm one of the pastors at Northbrook, and I am so grateful to be with you in worship this morning. If you're joining us for the first time, or if you just found us online, we welcome you. I hope everybody will register their attendance and let us know they're here. Um, I'm grateful to have this time of worship, even though we've got to still do it online. I'm grateful to be in your presence this morning. Couple of announcements. Tonight at 7 o'clock, there'll be a call charge conference for the Northbrook United Methodist Church congregation at 7 p.m. It will be by Zoom. Everybody and anyone is invited to be there. The only voting members will be those who are currently on the church council. A couple of mission things to know about. If you um, offer a donation of $50 or more to our Love Serve mission in Guatemala, you'll receive one of these incredible, wonderful masks um, as a thank you gift from Craig and Carol Hill. And I'm grateful for all of you who've already donated to Love Serve. Um, they are in desperate need and we wanna be in support of the missions that are happening there. Also, the Drake House annual uh, Miss Mary's Ice Cream Crack ice cream crank and drive through will be happening and that's going to be august 23rd from 2 to 4 p.m and you can find out more information about that online as well also if you're someone who's really into jurassic park or wants to learn more about it there's going to be a film and theology conversation with our very own reverend andrew chapel it will be on tuesday august 18th at seven o'clock by zoom and you'll have a chance to register for that as well also, this afternoon, right after worship at noon, we'll be having a time of back-to-school blessings. It'll be a drive through opportunity, and we invite all of you to come and be a part of that. Hi, I'm Dave Allen Grady, and I'm pastor of Christ United Methodist Church. Thinking about what's going on in the life of our congregation, the Christ congregation, I want to share a few announcements. Please remember that all of our online activities, ways of engaging on Sunday morning with the adult Sunday school class as well as the kids Sunday school class is still going on you can find that in the weekly word also the Wednesday midday Bible study and the Wednesday night youth online class are still going on as well and you can engage with those by following the links that are available in the weekly word that comes out on Thursdays if you need any help please reach out I need to give a special word of invitation for our called church conference. This is gonna be August 23rd at seven o'clock. It's gonna be out in front of the church. We ask everyone to please bring your own face mask, bring your own lawn chair, bring your own hand sanitizer, and everyone keep up the good work of staying socially distant when you come. And also make sure that when you greet each other, you do so in a way that uh, isn't involved physical touching and that will make sure we can all stay safe. And I appreciate that. Everyone's welcome, but only the professing membership of the church will be able to vote. And that's again on August 23rd at seven o'clock. I'm also thrilled to share that we're putting pieces in place for our confirmation service. This is the first confirmation service that Christ Church has had in over 10 years. And so we have five students are being confirmed, two of whom will also be seeking baptism. And so you're invited on August the 30th, again, seven o'clock in the evening, we'll be out in front of the church. We're gonna reserve the lawn with the social distancing for the confirmands and their immediate families. And we're gonna do a drive-in style engagement and worship for that with everyone else. More details in the coming week. I hope this morning, offers you a time of worship and a time of prayer, a time of settling and a time of peace. I am very excited about worshiping with you today and look forward to seeing you very soon.
as we come together as both congregations to pray, I want to encourage you to be in prayer for the conversations and planning for merging, um, and also for all of those who are struggling uh, with financial difficulty, those who are hurting, especially the Cheek family. Um, yesterday they uh, buried Philip Cheek, and we want to be in prayer for all of those who are in sorrow in this moment. Let's pray together. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the great love that you've shown us in Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for your promise in the resurrection, and we give you thanks, O oh God, that you walk with us no matter what we walk through together. I pray, O oh God, for healing and peace in our nation and in the world. I pray that we as a congregation would grow closer to you, would seek your answers and your solutions for the problems that exist, and that we would follow your lead. Help us to be faithful stewards of all that you've given us, and help us to continue to seek your blessing and to seek your love for your love surrounds us all the time, even when we can't see it. We ask that you would mold us and shape us in the form of Jesus Christ, that we would truly be servant leaders, people who serve in love, and people who sacrificially give. We thank you for his example, and we pray the words he taught us together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> and happy Sunday. So today in worship, we're talking about how the thoughts that we have in our minds are every bit as important to who we are as the words that come out of our mouths. And I know that sometimes it can feel like you can't really control your thoughts. And to some extent, that's true. But one thing that I've learned throughout my life is this, you can sort of train your thoughts to be different. And what I mean by that is this, if you're going through sort of what I like to call an Eeyore stage, where like Eeyore and Winnie the Pooh, all of your first thoughts, your initial reactions are negative, are sort of finding the downside, as I like to say, finding the gray cloud over any silver lining. Um, if you're going through one of those spells, which we all do, you can train your brain to not do that. So when you have the negative thought at first, you can begin by changing it and finding the positive thing before you speak it. So when you have the negative thought, you make the thing that comes out of your mouth a little bit more positive. Um, and eventually, if you do that enough to enough of your thoughts, your brain will begin finding the happier things before it finds the negative things. And you actually can train your thoughts. Now, why am I telling you this? Because as we enter this school year, for most of you tomorrow, when you begin this new school year, there are, let's be honest, a lot of negative things that we could focus on. It stinks that we cannot be together in schools. It stinks tremendously that I haven't seen you guys in person in forever. It feels like 90 years since we've been together in worship. Um, we're gonna have problems with our internet connections. We're gonna have surfaces that don't work the way they're supposed to. We're going to have teachers who have to quarantine. We are going to have teachers who are stressed out even when they're in their classrooms. We're going to have parents who are trying to juggle um, they're helping their kids with math that is hard and they need help with it and trying to do their full-time jobs all somehow while in their houses and fixing lunches and cooking dinners and trying to keep life going. There is going to be so much that's going to be hard, that's going to be difficult, that's going to be the way that maybe not the way we want it to be. And it's going to be easy to have some really negative thoughts. But what I can tell you is the more that you consistently have the negative thoughts, and the more you consistently throw those negative thoughts out in your expressions about the school year and your expressions about how it's going, the more negative you're going to become as a person and the more negative you're going to continue to view things. So I challenge you for this first week, every time that you have a thought that's negative, you pause. And before you let the words come out of your mouth, try to think of a positive spin that you can put on it. So instead of my internet went down in the middle of math class, you could think, 
cool, an extra break that I didn't expect during math class. I can go get some water or maybe a piece of chocolate or be a little bit healthier and find an apple in the kitchen. Instead of, I wish so desperately that I was no longer sitting in my living room doing school, but rather at school with my friends, you can think, hey, PJ pants for like six months. Who doesn't love those? So it's not going to be perfect. Life never is. And your thought process is not going to be perfect either. But let's work this first week on trying to train our thoughts to be more positive because the things that are in our hearts and in our minds are every bit as important as the things that come out of our mouths. And the things that you let yourself think and come out of your mouth become sort of who you are as a person. And God wants us to be presences of joy and love and positivity in this world. Have a great week, guys. Good luck tomorrow. Know that you are in our prayers. Amen. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Dave Allen Grady, and I'm pastor of the Christ United Methodist Church, and I'm thrilled to be sharing with you today from the Northbrook Sanctuary. It's a beautiful space. I gotta say though, uh, Laurie and Andrew the past two weeks talking about snacks, I'm not seeing any around here, so um, maybe they put me in the wrong place. That's actually kind of appropriate talking about what goes in our bodies because that's exactly what Jesus was talking about. Have you ever stood at the Grand Canyon and marveled at the beauty that is that work in creation? All the colors, the vastness of it, how deep it is. How many people have been inspired by that vista? It is a marvel to think that all of that was created by the work, the persistent work of the Colorado River over millions of years. How we shape a life over a lifetime is what Jesus is talking about. He began speaking about food laws and how we spend so much time and energy worrying and focusing on what we take in to nourish our bodies. And Jesus says in rather graphic terms what happens with that, how much more important it is to worry about what nourishes our souls, our minds, and our hearts. Now I wanna say that food laws were important. They were a way of keeping the law, which was a way of keeping the covenant. But it seems as if sometimes folks could miss the forest for the trees. We all do. And so Jesus is saying that knowledge matters. How we inform our minds, how we inform our hearts, how we inform our souls and shape our souls matters. For example, back in the day when I had enough time to do things like play video games, I played a, a Formula One racing game with some friends on a Saturday. And the graphics were amazing for the time, which meant it looks a lot like Minecraft does today. That shows how old I am. And I played it for a couple of hours, and then I went out with some other friends to eat dinner. And I drove, and I found myself resisting the temptation to drive aggressively, to tailgate, to speed, to rush to the traffic light. And I'm like, why is this? And it hit me. I spent two or three hours in front of a screen and an immersive experience driving aggressively. So, of course, for a minute, my mind had to get back to how to drive normally, right? This type of import for what it means to shape our hearts or minds, it's been part of who we are as Methodist. The early Methodist movement with John Wesley himself, he created the Christian library. It was an edited volume that said that Methodists should read these things because these talk about what we believe and how we go about living in the world. One of the first acts of the Methodist church here in America was to create a school. And that gets lived out today with many schools existing as a preschool in a United Methodist Church and then places like Emory University, a United Methodist institution whose motto is the wise heart seeks knowledge. Many of us, after the 9-11 attacks, spent so much time with our meals eaten and our free time passed in front of the TV. And even when we were doing other things, cable news was on in the background. And it raised the anxiety of so many. And it was almost as if we were all walking around 20 years ago waiting for the next shoe to drop. And yet here we are today in the midst of a pandemic. And I think that many of us are doing the same thing. Not that we shouldn't be informed, but we shouldn't be paralyzed or paranoid. For example, it's my job as a leader to be informed about what is best practices for 
gathering congregations and how to be in public. And I spent one afternoon earlier in this pandemic, late spring, early summer, poring over all the CDC guidelines, all the state health department guidelines. And that afternoon, it was my turn to go and do the grocery store run in our household. So I go and one of the first people I see did not have a mask on. And I'm embarrassed to think about what I thought. I didn't even pause to think, maybe the guy left his mask in his car, maybe he left it at home and he's in a hurry. I didn't bother to see whether or not there were disposable masks available at the door or even if, even gave him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he had his mask in his pocket and he forgot that he didn't have it on his face. All that time and energy reading all those guidelines kind of made me be a little bit judgmental. Knowledge matters. How we shape our hearts, our minds, and our souls matter. I think one of the pieces that makes me so excited about these conversations as Christ in Northbrook Church is considering merging is the tenor with which these conversations have happened. The guiding principle has been from day one, how can we go about blessing this community? How can we go about enhancing the lives and serving others here in Roswell? And how can we create openings and space for people who might wish to have a new or a renewed relationship with Jesus begin those conversations? And I'm thrilled. It's almost as if uh, a way of looking at our lives is thinking about our Christian faith as a jeopardy question of all things. So that the, answer, the question is, what is a Christian? And then the answer is, are you focused on shaping the lives of others as a congregation? That works for us as individuals too, right? Not what is a Christian and we point to bumper stickers or clothes we wear or jewelry we wear, but rather, are we more joyful than anxious? Are we more hopeful than frustrated? When we meet someone, do we practice hospitality to all or do we differentiate? Now, the gift of grace is that none of us are going to get this right every time. So this is where grace steps in and we're grateful for that. Computer programmers speak of the concept of GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. And what they mean is, is that if you put bad data or you frame the coding incorrectly, you're always going to get a faulty result. What about instead of garbage in, garbage out, we thought this week, about good stuff in, good stuff out. I'm so thankful that you're worshiping via this live stream today. But how is this changing your life, this experience today? And what are you gonna do with that? Good stuff in, good stuff out. One of the gifts, I think, of this time of rethinking what church looks like, both as we talk about merger and in this season of pandemic, is we're realizing that maybe it's not so much about worship attendance and membership, but it's more about transformation and engagement. How has this engagement with the Holy Spirit and in this community changed your life? And how is that going to shape how we engage in the world? Good stuff in. Good stuff out. In the name of the one who creates, redeems, and sustains, may we all have good stuff this week, both coming in and going out. Amen.
let us now go forth into the world to love and serve both God and our neighbor in all that we do, so that to those for whom love is a stranger may find in you a generous friend. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace.